What's up, everybody? This is your boy, Ed Honcho, a.k.a. The Real Ed Honcho, and we are in the Cush Den. We want to welcome you. It is my co-host, Mr. Shaquille O'Cushington. You got something you want to say to What it do, what it do, baby. All right. Free throws all day. All day. And this is the Cush Den. So if you're not familiar with what the Cush Den is, this is a 420-friendly situation. So if you ain't pre-roll, you out of control. If you ain't stuffed your bowl, you out of control. You got to get out your shit together. Control. Out of control. So get your shit together. Go ahead. We're going to light up. And today, now that you stepped in the den, have a seat, relax, kick your feet up fire one up you know you should never smoke by yourself the cush den is always here for you you're always welcome to come into the den you should never smoke alone you know you should never have boring smoke sessions it's always good conversation to be had but welcome to the den we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about a little a little a little situation that occurred a couple of days ago between the notorious mr lavar ball and this lady here uh i believe her name is christine Leahy. Now, Mr. Kush, you want to update the folks on what has taken place, what is what has transpired between Mr. Ball and uh, Miss Leahy? Well, apparently, uh, it seems like uh, Lavar was talking, and she wanted to come at him about some things, and he apparently didn't want to talk to her, and now he's dabbed of uh, being mean to women. He's a bad guy to women because he didn't want to talk to her and she kept coming at him. So now he's uh, racist. Uh, he doesn't like women. What? He's oh. a mean bully. He, he just one of them guys. guys. One of those guys. One of those guys. Okay. 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 Well, a couple of things i like to point out about this. Uh, I mean, let's, let's, let's start first things first. Um, so... You know, by now, if you're here checking this out, you've seen the situation, you've seen the interaction that has occurred between the two of them. And I'm going to come out and say, say my opinion that I don't believe he was wrong at all. I don't feel as though there was a problem with anything he said. So you don't think he's a sexist because he doesn't make his clothes for women? But here's my thing about that. Does Lane Bryant make clothes for men? Does I don't. Would, would you want to see some big ball or high heels? No, absolutely not. But what I'm saying is the fact that one guy starts a company, you're trying to tell him how to run his brand. And this is his company. You're not putting any money towards. You've already said publicly, I would never wear those shoes. I would never wear that shirt. So why would he give a fuck about you if you're not interested in his brand? He's not marketing towards you. And if you just sat, came out and said, I don't want this and I wouldn't do this, I would why would he want your opinion on his brand? This is my thing. This, this like what, what what I feel is she tried to flip the script, okay? Because prior to him arriving on the show, she talked a lot of shit about this dude. Talked about the way he raises his family. You know, he talks about, you know, his involvement in his children's lives. You know, a, a lot of things. Now, you know, in a cush den and in you know me personally, and as you know, Mr. Cushion, you know how I am. My views tend to differ from most black people. But on this situation, I have to bring and make it a racial thing uh, uh, because it, it became that. Because, and not necessarily like a racist thing, but, you know, when the dads aren't in their lives, you know, that's the thing. All these guys, you know, it was, uh, who was it, Phil Jackson, I think, recently was talking about, well, Maybe because his dad wasn't in his life when he was talking about Carmelo or something like that, that he doesn't know how to act a certain way. Okay, so when their dads aren't in their lives, it's a problem. Now, mm-hmm. when the dad is in his life, it's a problem. But my big deal with this is, you know, people say, oh, he's trying to profit off his kids. Oh, he's trying to do this. So what you're telling me is it's okay for me to do all the work, raise my children, make them successful enough for you to be talking about them to see that they're considered to be one of the top picks in the NBA – and get them to that point that I'm supposed to just let them go off into someone else's hands that I'm not familiar with, that I don't know. And I'm not saying that I'm, you're supposed to be overprotective. Once he gets grown, you know, he can make those decisions himself. But maybe he wants to say, you know what, my dad's been here for me the whole time. I know he's going to have my best interest at heart always. Maybe this is the guy I do want watching over me because I know that I'll always get what I, what I deserve. I'll get the best. I know he's going to push for me to get the most. He's not going to fuck me over. You know, mm-hmm. people talking about he's profiting. Oh, well, the big baller brand shoes. 
Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't wear something with ball. Or, hey, guess what? The dude's last name is Ball. Ball. Oh. Lavar Ball. That name is Ball. That a ball, mate. My son's Ball. They're ballers. That's what they do. They're basketballers. They play basketball. They're like, I, I wouldn't. Wear, who gives a fuck about you? You know what I'm saying? Like, you have a million. Like women have, and like I said, it's, they just be a sexist thing or a race, whatever. But it's, it's honest. This is all I can. Women have a fucking million stores that they can shop at that there are no men's clothes or not. Victoria's Secret. <laughs> Uh, 21s, uh, no, not 20, but Forever 21, something like that. Uh, the Rainbow Place, all these different little stores that I've, I've seen in malls and shit like that. I'm just trying to, I can't, you know, think of all of them. It's been a long time since I've actually been to a mall, mall, and all the online shopping and shit. But there's a million fucking brands and a million fucking companies that make clothes only for women. Why can't you, like, in this day and age, this is what, this is what bugs me, and this is what bugs me about that. Is that 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 feminist mentality that that like I'm not a feminist. I know a lot of guys say, "Well, I'm a feminist because no, I'm not a feminist. I am all about equal rights. I want you get what you deserve. If you put out when I say equal rights, I, I say equal rights in terms of effort. You deserve to be treated by the effort you put out. If you're a lazy, bum ass, shitty person, then you deserve to be treated like that. But if you're a go getter, it shouldn't be determined by your race, your sex. If you're a go getter, you deserve the same chances as everybody else if you're putting that work out. But this whole thing about everybody should be included in everything, it pisses me the fuck off. You know what I'm saying? Because it ain't designed like that. People should be allowed yeah, to have. And like I say, it's it's like the thing with you know what I'm saying once again, you know what I'm saying? I love women to the fullest. But I mean, like I say, they sometimes you put a woman in a situation, you know, she'll be all in the man's face yelling, yelling, hooting, hollering. And then if he pushes her away or hits her in the face, you know, all of a sudden it's like, oh, my God, I can't yeah. believe he did that. He's a man. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, it's like, so what if it was reversed the other way around? A man's all the same and all of a sudden it's all, oh, that's verbal abuse. Exactly. I mean, well, like, come on. I mean, cause it got to be equal both ways. Exactly. You want equal rights. Man, I've said this since junior high. I say equal rights, equal fights. So if the thing is, if everything is supposed to be equal, like, women have a natural benefit. Because as a man, you it's hard to resist Unless he's just ass ugly. It's hard to resist a woman's charm. A woman can do a slight flirt and get her way. Most men can't resist that. Now, most men. You know, and I'm not speaking about myself necessarily. I'm not speaking about you necessarily, but we're just speaking in general terms. Women have a natural advantage. Let a man try to use his body or flirt his way. But nine times out of ten, you're going to have to be like an exceptional type of guy. Just some 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 kind of rare breed for that to work or for you. have him. a lot of damn money. Oh, but then if you have a lot of money, then they just going to flock to you. But what I'm saying is, like, to say, to, to get a favor done or to get something done like women do. Women, yeah, well, oh, I'm just going through it. Uh, could you could you pay my rent? And niggas will flock out. I mean, if you go on Instagram and all this shit, a woman posts a picture, a 100,000 dudes come from out of nowhere with the thirstiness, okay? Thirst is a power, thirst power. That's a power that you have over men. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and all things being said, with equality, uh, and I'm not saying, like, like I said, I want equality. It's just something men would have to deal with on their own. With everything being equal, women would have more power over men. That natural inherited power would, you know, would definitely. All I can say is this. You have never heard of a guy getting out of a speed ticket because he flashed a little bit of cleavage. Exactly. Or giving a phone number or something like that. I've heard, I've heard of it dozens of times. And so, you know. That's what I'm saying. So about that, that oh, well, you don't make clothes. Who gives a fuck? Okay, that points out of there. Bitch, you got a million fucking other choices that you can fucking go to. Okay, cool. Now, that's one. Now, two. This dude was not trying to engage with her, but she was steadily egging it on, created a situation, and then in the end, tried to play the victim. And that's he thing. even told me he was like, I don't want to talk to you. You scare me. Mm-hmm. You scare me. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to look at you. Exactly. She said, well, why? Well, why? Well, why? Yeah. And like, let that man be at yeah. a certain point. You got to let him be. He said he didn't want to hold the conversation. Well, don't talk to him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He like, gave you credit. He said you was a very good reporter. But right now, I don't, don't want to talk to you. Yeah. And I think as an American, you, you have that right, don't you? I mean, I, I, I thought he we gave had... her respect. You got to give him back his respect. Exactly. It's simple as that. But then. And like I say, as a reporter, as a journalist, you know that their their job is to egg shit on, to to draw shit out of the story. You know what I mean? And and so I feel like that's what she was doing. And then 
okay, when he said something, you know, yeah, well, you know, well, something's going to happen to you. You got something coming to you. It, oh, was that a threat? The man didn't say, hey, I'm going to do something to you. Or I, I, I'm. he's trying to avoid dealing with you at all, period. He said, what he's saying is, then it's the truth. People who act a certain way have certain consequences. Not saying that somebody's going to come and, and, and shoot you or beat you up or something like that. Well, those consequences may be like, you're this type of woman. Well, your relationships are going to suffer because of your personality, who you are. When you're this type of person, you're going to have situations that are just going to be consistent because of who you are. And that just won't ever change. So something comes to something bad, bad things happen. And, and, and something could be meaning anything. But it's instantly because he's large. He's black. She's a smaller white woman. That image comes back to mind but that, that's been propaganda from way back when, you know, that, that you can't help it. And like I say, you can't help it. And I, and, and, and I can I, I, I think about it and I break down racism and, and things like this all the time. People can't help the fact that they're racist. Racism is really ignorance. And that's all it is. It's, it's a lack of knowledge about, you know, another race, another culture, whatever it may be. Basic. And so actually, like I say, I don't care about race. I don't care about racism because I actually feel bad for those people because they're ignorant. That's just, it's just ignorance. I, mean, I embrace other cultures. That's a big thing to me because you learn, you just learn some wonderful things when you, when you embrace other things. You know, I'm not, I'm not all about just ghetto shit. I, I fuck with hood shit, but I look at shit, you know, white people do or what's classified as generally white people. I look at shit that Asian people do, you know, uh, real African. You got to implement all these things, you know, but. Like I said, something can mean anything, but people just look for it to be, you know, because he's black. And so, like I said, all that racism, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm jumping point, but all that racism is ingrained in people, even if it's subtle. So it looks like a large one. It could be the sexist thing. It could be a man attacking a woman. That might be what they see. They could see the black versus white thing. That might be what they see. Um, you know, you just have a lot of, uh, uh, there's other angles that you can look at, you know, and I hate that it's like that, you know, because honestly, when I look at it, I look at it as two individuals trying to engage in conversation but like one of them is like I say she's playing the victim role so you got so instead of you know knowing that she's not contributing anything beneficial to the conversation she's trying to alter the conversation in a way that makes it look like he was the antagonist when in reality she was you know and then people do that a lot these days they'll try to set stuff up they'll fuck with you and and, and try to put you in a position and then when they get you right where they want you, they'll try to flip the script. When you get mad and when you get to the point where you're like, hey, I really don't want to do it, whatever it may be, then they'll try to flip it and make it seem like you're the one that accosted them. And, you know, I think that's some bullshit that, that you know, people do that. And I think now she said something about now she's been getting death threats and all that. I, I don't know about it. Like, to me, that just sounds like more victim shit. It might have been one and then, you know, we, let's blow it out of proportion. But... To me, the shit is it's it's fucking crazy. Uh, let the man parent his kids. He's obviously done something well enough uh, for them to be successful up until this point. Hold on, hold on, before you get into that, though, I'd like to make one thing—a little side note, just to, just to say with this, the way they're going at each other. Like you know, basically, he was being very cautious about what he was saying. Yeah, absolutely, he was being very, very polite about what he was saying. He wasn't saying nothing offensive. He wasn't yelling at her. Or nothing like that. Yeah. But the way she was attacking him, if the role would have been reversed, and that would have been him attacking her, the oh, way she was talking oh. about, I would never wear your clothes. Oh, you're you, you're you don't like women, you know? Because in fact, he is a married man. Yeah. You know, if that was the way, oh man, they would have bashed. Oh, I can't believe you said that to a woman. Yeah, but I, I can't mean, believe you did but, that. But the thing is that they're still saying it now when he really did like That's what, what I'm saying, but what? just imagine if it was the other way around oh, how man, worse it would have been. It would have been horrible, but my, my thing is in his position, what options does he have? He came on the Colin Coward show. He's talking to Colin Coward. Right? Her name, yep. her name ain't Colin Coward. He's like, hey, I don't want to speak to you. Okay, you're not the headliner of the show. You're not relevant. Um, I'm here to speak to the host. I'm on his show. Okay, I politely tried to dismiss you. I said, you know, I don't want to engage with you. You know, and you choose not to respect those wishes. You choose to continue to egg that shit on. So, yeah, like you say, if you would invade somebody else's area like that, vocally or verbally, whatever you want to call it, it would have been an issue. 
And I think that's quite unfair because you've got people who are still demonizing him, like, oh, he did this, he attacked her, and he did all these things when he did nothing but try to just deflect. Talk to Colin, she tried to, well, well, well how many shows have, have, shows have you sold? In? And how many, have you done this? How, uh, you know, for what he was charging, I honestly feel like this, too, as a side note about the shoes. Charging $500 for the shoes. I'm sure he sold a decent amount, you know, like he said, four or 500. Everybody can't fi- up f- afford 500 bucks for some shoes. So one, you're not going to have just mm-hmm. millions of sales. There. But I guarantee you this, you know, maybe he did that for whatever reason, but I guarantee you this, if those shoes would have been about a buck 50, he'd have probably made a million dollars off of them. Because there are so many ball fans and all that shit around the world. He actually has a lot more fans than people realize because people are starting to see, you know, hey, some of the shit he's talking about does make sense. Now, you know, a lot of people dismiss him. He's like, oh, you're saying crazy, man. If you don't got confidence in yourself, what are you living for? What are you What are you existing for if you don't have confidence in yourself to say those things, the outlandish things that he said? You know, I say, I, man, I support that 110%. If you don't believe in yourself, to come out and say things like, you know, whatever, then, you know, hey. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, people get mad because the man has confidence in himself. He has confidence in his children. Hey, you suppose that kind of, you're not supposed to say, well, hey, what do you think? Do you think that this guy can beat you up? Hell no, he can't beat me up. I don't get who he is, you know what exactly. I'm saying? He was just like, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Look, I say, everybody's mad at him, but if you really listen to what the man has to say, he's making facts. He's making points. Every thing that we say every day it's the same shit he just has he's saying on tv yeah, he doing a, what he other a, people wish they could have did he has but a, they couldn't do yeah, it he has a platform for it so like i say my thing is is you look at it like i say the dude kids ain't shot nobody they ain't robbers still they ain't gang banging they ain't doing none of that crazy stuff they're playing basketball they're playing basketball and they're good <laughs> at it why are they yeah. good at it because he put in work to make them good that they would like the story better if if he was in jail, the mom was living in the hood. Yeah, you, you know this this is their only ticket out of the ghetto. Yeah, I mean that's what they you man, know that's, that's what they want to hear. That's but the narrative. Nah. That's the narrative, man, and, and and that's the narrative, and that's another thing. Like I say, man, that and and why I say about just a bunch of issues, though. You you, you have a lot of things when you want to talk about sports and, and race and and other things like that. But yeah, that story is much better. If it, yeah, you want to hear the story about man. Yeah, uh, no. If his dad, like, here's here's it goes. Here's how it goes. If his dad was in his life, his dad had to have been a famous athlete already. Or the story needs to be he grew up super poor, like you said, in the projects, barely making it, escaping violence, and his only way up out the hood was playing basketball to save him, his mom, and his four brothers and sisters, and 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 all this other you know dramatic stuff that has to happen. Yeah, for him to be so good, and then that's the narrative they want to push. But the fact that. The dude just, the dude, hey, obviously has been putting in work because all his kids are good at basketball, getting scholarships, one going to the league, very, going to be drafted very high. And when it all comes down to it, you know their names, and most likely they don't know ours. You know, so obviously somebody's doing something right because he, to me, I think he's, he's a marketing genius. Now, you may be turning some people off of your brand. But, oh, they're familiar with your brand. I think he's taking a gamble, you know, with his son. Because, but I, I think it's a smart, it's a, a low-risk, high-reward gamble. Because all these people say, okay, well, you don't want to fuck with your kid. We don't want to uh, fuck with big baller brand. We don't want to do all that. Let Lonzo Ball come to the league and start balling. Let him come to the league and, 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 and make a, a semi-solid name for himself. Especially if he ends up in L.A. somehow. Make a semi-solid name for himself. Tell me that big baller brand won't blow up because it won't be owned if by. If he him. lands in L.A. alone, that big baller brand is gonna blow up. Exactly, because he at the house. So anyway, what I'm saying is that man, the dude is the dude is smarter than people want to give him credit for. Um, like I say, I think he was tried. They they tried to. Well, I'm not gonna say they. I think she tried to play him into a trap yesterday. And that was unfair to that man. You know what I mean? Like, the dude came on. I'm sure he had an agenda because he knows that he's smart. The dude knows that his TV time is going to be limited. And every time I get it, I'm going to make the most of it. I'm going to say something outrageous so motherfuckers want to keep talking about me. And as long as they want to keep talking about me, I'll have time to keep pushing that brand. 
Like on the background right now, the the big baller brand logo is on there. Had he not made that, who, who, what would it have been? Hey, just let me just let me just send my kid to the league. Cool, he's going to the league no matter what. So what is he gonna lose if he if he would have just been a regular guy, never knew his daddy, went to the league, same draft pick, been a bust, never heard of him. That's it. That's the end of him. Even if he goes to the league now, or he's going to the league now, if he if he's a bust. Okay, he'll have a little bit long, more longevity in the conversation because people talk about, oh, I remember all that, that hoopla you know, his dad made about him and all that. He, he turned out to be garbage. But he'll make some money in the meantime, more money than he would have made you know, just being a regular dude by having this company, by having the, the big baller brand behind him. Now, here's the next yeah. thing. Here's the next thing. You got another kid coming up who's going to be pretty good. Now, don't know if he will or won't make it to the league. Not sure about that. Okay, now I don't know what it would be, how the, the, the NCAA would, would, would work with uh, him wearing his father's brand. You know, they're real. The NCAA can make money off the kids, but you, the kids can't make no money, you know. So that's that's how that works, that bullshit. But um, so, you know, I don't know how his brand would do, but I think the big baller brand is going to steal the ball because of the younger one. These guys all have fan bases. So people are going to yeah. buy this shit. Like, now, he needs to be smart, lower the price, drop this shit to about a buck and a quarter, and people will be buying. People will be wearing them fucking grandpa shoes all over the map, dog. <laughs> I'm telling you, dog, people be in them So home. what you're saying is you don't like them? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, LeVar Ball is a master marketer. I don't know about his design skills. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about his taste. His taste in in clothing now, but I'm just saying he is a master marketer. You know what I mean? So hey, he came out. He doing the thing, but yeah, I mean, them shoes are ugly. That shoes are ugly as fuck. Now. The shoes are ugly as fuck. But you know what I'm saying is that you'd have so many people because nowadays people, you know, if if people fuck with you, they're gonna support you. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of people who fuck with him, but you, you're pricing a lot of them out with that $500 shit. You know what I mean? So all I'm saying is that I think um, if he dropped the price on that shit, that he would uh, he would definitely, definitely sell a lot more shoes, make a lot more money. But, you know, let the media keep playing him as a joke. Hopefully if he, if he, if he's half as smart as I'm giving him credit for, which I think he is, then he's doing what he, he he's making it do what it do. He he he's smart because like I said, he came into the interview. He didn't let her bait him into just snapping and just saying a bunch of off the wall ass shit as it seemed like she was trying to do, you know, for for whatever purpose I don't know. But like I said, then you know, next couple of days come out playing the role like I'm the victim and I would, you know, the man didn't want to deal with you. He wasn't trying to fuck with you. He didn't how are you a victim? If a man if a person says, hey, could you leave me alone? I don't want to fuck with you. At that point, you know, you're no longer a victim. At that point, you've chosen to to create a situation. You know what I mean? What could have been squashed, what could have been nothing, you decided to egg it on and turn it into something. And you know that to me that's that's unnecessary. Very unnecessary. But, you know, that's just my opinion. That's just how I feel about it. You know what I mean? But like I say, if the shit would have been something else, it'd been a whole nother story, people would be wouldn't even be tripping on the shit. But because like I say, he's a a dominant guy and he's really taking front and center. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a they don't want to see the, the big black guy just be out there. Like I, I say what I say, everything he's doing, I give him credit for what he's doing because like I said, at the end of the day, those are his kids. Yeah. If Lonzo goes to the NBA and he gets hurt and never play basketball again, guess what? Lavar's still gonna be there for him. Exactly. At, uh, two or three years we ain't no longer gonna hear the name again. We'll probably not even think of him unless the old the, the little younger brother comes to the NBA or something like that. Exactly. You're not gonna hear about him ever again. But guess what? His dad is always gonna be there for him. Like he's been there for him this whole time. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, all he's doing, he's being a positive father. He's pushing kid. I mean, what would y'all prefer him to do? Like what they did in the movie, he got game, and then be a drunk out there pushing the kid and they're going to jail. That's that's a story they would rather hear. They don't want to hear about a guy made a brand for like me. He made it. Like, come on, who has done that? Nobody. Exactly. So hey. nobody is doing what he's doing. When he made his own brand for his son that is still in college. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. So shit. Hey, that's love right there. You got that's 
that's faith. That's that's confidence in not only your child, but the foundation that you instilled in them. Because you got to realize, you know, he ain't going to, you know, everybody, everybody talk about helicopter parenting and he's all over. Nah, man, fuck that, dog. Like, no fuck trying to say, oh, well, he's afraid. Have you ever seen him? Have you ever seen him talk? Um, have you ever seen him around his dad? He doesn't ever say anything. That ain't fear, dog. That's fucking respect, dog. Like, you know, when shit, you know, I mean, it's a different thing, I guess, you know, like I say, you know, my pops was around summertime. And even though that, like, I have a, a certain respect for him, even though there's a, even we, you know, it's an odd feeling, but I can understand where he's coming from. If your father was actually somebody who tried to instill some things into you, which my pops did try to do, you know, when he was around. So shit. So you, you kind of have, you have respect for people who teach you, you know, and it can be the same way with mothers and other things too. But what I'm saying is that the type of personality that his dad is and the way that he's instilled these things in him, that's the respect that he has. I know people, like you see a lot of these players, they have that same type of respect for their mom. They're not going to be out there just talking reckless in front of their mom. They do an interview with their mom. They kind of quiet, don't say too much. But you see anybody, they talking crazy and reckless. You know, when mom ain't around, that's just how it is. You know what I mean? Like, shit. But people just like, I, I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what people expect from the dude. A lot of people just hate to see people do better than them. And then a lot of people just hate because everybody else is hating. And so I don't understand the shit, though. I don't understand. My thing is this is like we gave him the spotlight. And I say we because, of course, we're talking about him, too. Yeah. We gave him the spotlight. He didn't say, hey, look, give me a camera. Put me on TV. We gave him the spotlight. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So let him do like what he do. Like I say, man, you just got to you got to give him respect. At the end of the day, it's all about respect because those are his kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. He raised his kids right. I, I wish I had a father like that. Yeah, I mean, that's what you want. said. You know that he instilled a foundation in them from young, and you know that, you know, he taught them the right things to do. He, you know, and so, like I say, because you don't see no, all you see these dudes is play ball. Other than that, you don't really see no negative shit from them. You don't see no none of that other stuff with all the attention they are already getting. So obviously he's done something right. He's raised them ready to be to be ready for that spotlight or whatever it may be, how to handle that type of shit. So, you know, like I say, we can, we can really wrap it up on that because, like I say, this is just craziness, and I just feel like the lady really just, you know, was out of bounds and really tried to create something out of nothing with that situation. And, you know, I mean, I, 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 like I said, I just, now you see a lot of people talking about, and I said I want to squash, but you see a lot of people now talking about, don't put LeVar Ball on TV ever again. Why? What did he do? Like, can somebody explain to me? That's what I, I mean. I want somebody to explain to me what he did that was so bad. What did he do? What Because he, was, he, he quote, unquote, disrespected one woman now, he disrespects all women. Who is she? Who, who made her? The 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 epitome of who right here the the female representative. I don't see how he disrespected. He cussed her out. He call out her name. But that's what I'm saying though. That's what I'm saying. He didn't disrespect anything about her. He said she was a good reporter. He just I don't feel you you report on me well. You know, gave her a compliment. All these good things, but somehow he's the disrespectful. Somehow he's hateful. He's a sexist. He's a you know, all these crazy things, and it just blows my mind that. People are just so biased. Like I, I don't, I don't see, I don't understand. You know what he did that was just so out of line. You know, you come on here and say, "Hey, you know, I hate your clothes." If, you, if somebody came up to you, okay, when you had something on, don't really know you. Knew they've been talking shit about you. So you just like, you know, I, I, I got to go over here. I know this person don't like me, but I got to take care of my business. And they're gonna be right there. Okay, so you go do what you do. But now this person is just saying, man. You know, uh, uh, what's going on with you? You're going to be annoyed. You're going to say, hey, man, I don't want to fool with you. And this person says, well, hey, with this, keeps asking you questions. Hey, well, what's this? You know, I, I would never wear what you're wearing. Uh, you need to do this. You should, you should change what you're doing. You should change your whole personality. <laughs> While you're here to take care of business, that shit would irk the fuck out of you. That shit would make man, any common person. To me, huh? to me personally, that, that's almost like if. You know, you're talking to one of your friends and they try to compare 
like a very good rap group from back in the day because he knew mumble rappers. That shit would just piss me off. I'm done with this conversation, Chris. <laughs> because then this conversation is up. over. The den is over. Shaquille Cushington has ruined the conversation. We're not going to talk about this. If you want to know what, <laughs> if you want to know what Shaquille O'Cushing is, so Shaquille O'Cushington is talking about. There is a video where we discuss uh, about whether or not Bone Thugs and Harmony is mumble rap. From hey, y'all better go listen to it. You gotta check it out. This guy is out of his mind. Don't watch the video, it's please. A, it's a very good video. I think you guys should check it out. If you if you need to get back in the den, definitely go check it out. This guy, I'm done with this guy. I'm done. It's over, man. Kush did. I am the real Ed Hanso. Give me a follow on Twitter, Instagram. This is my boy. Exactly, but he likes the mumble rap. Shaquille O'Cushington, you can catch him on the Twitter at Shaq, Kush, <coughs> Shaq underscore Kush32 and on the Instagram at Shaq.Kush. Oh, my God, this guy here. Hey, we want to welcome y'all. Free we want to welcome y'all. We want to thank y'all. We're not welcoming y'all. We're, getting, we're kicking y'all out the den now, but we want to appreciate y'all for having a seat in the den with us, man. You're welcome anytime. You should never smoke alone. You know, it's always it's always going down in the Kush den. Mommy boy, the real Ed Hunter. That's Shaquille O'Cushington. Do so. I'm out. We out.